In this problem, we're told a helicopter rotor blade can be considered a long, thin rod, as shown in this figure. A. If each of the three rotor helicopter blades is 3.75 meters long and has a mass of 135 kilograms, calculate the moment of inertia of the three rotor blades about the axis of rotation. And then B is how much torque must the motor apply to bring the blades from rest up to a speed of 5 revolutions per second in 8 seconds. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So I went ahead and redrew uh, the diagram. So this is going to be our diagram. And so, yeah, let's start with A. So what are we trying to solve for in A? So for A, we want to calculate the moment of inertia of the three rotor blades. And so the way you want to think about this as, is as three separate objects. So imagine all of these uh, rods are just three separate uh, things, right? And so they're each going to be rotating around this. So just think about each one separately. So what we need to do is calculate the moment of inertia of each of, one, uh, each of them and then add them up. So they're all going to be the same though because they're the same, right? So it's just a rod 3.75 meters long and then each of them have a mass of 135 kilograms. So essentially, we just need to solve for the inertia of one of them and then multiply by three because they're all the same. So how do we do that? So the equations for inertia are different depending on the type of object. So in this case, we have a rod and it's going to be rotating around an object at the end. And so the equation that we use for that is the equation or the inertia is equal to one over three times the mass times the length squared. So this is the equation that you'd use for a rod that's rotating like this. And so what we can do is solve for the inertia for one of them and then multiply by three. And so let's go ahead and do that. And so if you're running where we get these equations, uh, if you look in your textbook, they should have a list of all the equations and they list uh, when you use it for the different type of object. So in this case, we're using this one, but it should show you in your textbook. So just take a look at that. And so let's go ahead and calculate it. So one over three multiplied by the mass, which is 135 multiplied by the length squared. So the length of the rod is 3.75 squared. So let's go ahead and do this. So if you go ahead and do, uh, well, before we do this, so keep in mind, this is just one rod, but there's three of them. So we can multiply the, uh, this by three first. So this is one rod and we're, since there's three of them, we just multiply by three. So three times one over three times all this, what you should notice is the one over three and three cancel. So really it's just going to be equal to 135 times 3.75 squared. So if you go ahead and do this, 135 times 3.75 squared, you're going to get 1,898.4375. I'm going to go ahead and round though to 1898. So 1898, and then keep in mind the units. This right here is in kilograms, and then this is in meters. So you measure it in kilogram meters. But keep in mind this is squared, so it's kilogram meters squared. So this right here is going to be your answer to A, so 1,898 kilogram meters squared. So that's A. Let's move on to B now. So B wants us to find how much torque must the motor apply to bring the blades from rest up to a speed of five revolutions per second. So we're going to be solving for torque. And so uh, before we do it, let's write down our given because they give us a bunch of variables here. So it's just important to write those down. So how much torque to bring the blades from rest to a speed of this. So basically they tell us the initial angular velocity and the final, right? So the initial, it's starting from rest. So zero revolutions per second. And then it's gonna go to a speed of five revolutions per second. So that's gonna be that. And then they tell us the time this is gonna take. It's gonna take eight seconds. And so we're trying to find torque. So torque equals question mark because that's what we're solving for. So the way we want to solve for this is, or the way I would approach it is saying, well, we know that torque is equal to inertia times alpha or the angular acceleration. And what you should notice is we have the inertia and we can solve for the angular acceleration using these variables. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, we need to realize angular acceleration is first though. So angular acceleration is essentially the change in angular velocity over the change in time. Right, so what's the change in angular velocity? Well, it's gonna be omega final minus omega initial over the change in time, right? And we know all of these. We know the time is gonna be eight seconds, right, eight seconds over. And then when we do this, we have to make sure this is in radians per second, or our, our um, angular velocity is in radians per second because this has to be in radians per second squared. So. Keep in mind, this is in revolutions per second, so we have to convert it into radians per second. 
right? Because we have five minus zero, but then it would be revolutions per second squared, which is in the units we want. So let's convert that. So five revolutions per second. We know that one revolution is equal to two pi radians, or you should know that conversion. I recommend knowing it because you need to know it to solve it. But what you notice is the revolutions will cancel, and then you'll just get five times two is just 10 pi. So 10 pi radians per second. So that's that. Uh, now we can just plug it in on top. So it'll be 10 pi radians per second. So 10 pi minus, and then w sub 0 is 0, but 0 revolutions per second is 0 radians per second. So 0, and then keep in mind what this is. It's radians per second. So when you do this, you should get 10 pi over 8 uh, radians per second squared. So yeah, that's going to be angular acceleration and now we have angular acceleration and we have inertia and we can solve for the torque so let's go ahead and do that so the torque is going to be the inertia which is 1898 multiplied by uh, angular acceleration so 10 pi over 8 so let's go ahead and plug this in the calculator so if you do 1898 times 10 pi over 8 you're going to get 7453 point four two and so on eight five and so yeah you can just round however you want you could just say seven four five three or just round to seventy five hundred whatever your teacher wants you to do make sure you do but keep in mind what the units this is going to be in uh newton meters so yeah seventy five hundred newton meters or whatever your teacher wants you to write it just make it sure you do it that way but yeah so seventy five hundred newton meters is your answer to this is b right so b and then A is 1,898 kilogram times meters per second squared. But yeah, hopefully you found this useful.